Thank you so much, Chairwoman. And I want to thank all of you so much for being here. And as a former immigration attorney, I can tell you the system is completely deteriorated, broken down. We should have been changing it 20 years ago. Um, if you have an issue with asylum, and some of us even currently do, and it does take too long, because there are people that actually want a decision right away and having their lives literally on hold because they haven't had a decision is is really un, un, impractical for their lives. It, and, and they get so rooted here, waiting three to five years. You think they want to, they don't. I have have clients and I've worked in the pro bono area for years and I'm telling you, my heart breaks, y'all. Honestly, the horrific suffering of these vulnerable immigrant children and families, seeing what I saw in El Paso, but what is even more upsetting is realizing that the Trump administration's cruelty towards migrants, and I'm gonna just call them families, families and children, isn't just a bug in the system. Uh, it's the entire point, it's an ideology. Last week, President Trump tweeted, if illegal immigrants, it's his words, are unhappy with conditions in, in the quickly built or refitted detention centers, just tell them not to come, all problem solved, explanation point. He seems to be admitting that detention conditions are terrible and that was intentional to deter migrants from coming. Mr. Mr. Bren, would, it, would you agree with that assessment? Absolutely not. If, Mr. if you and your children are trapped in a burning building, it does not matter how miserable I make it on the street, you're gonna do whatever you can do to get out of that burning building with your kids. Deterrence is, an, is a completely ineffective policy. All it does is ramp up human suffering. But that's exactly what he's trying to do. He thinks this is gonna deter folks from coming. That's the whole point of the policy. And I can tell you, I, I talked to three incredibly, I think, sincere CPP agents. I mean, these Border Patrol agents took me aside, not in front of the others, because you know, the model is honor first. So there's this culture you don't tell on each other. But three of them took me aside. One specifically says, stop throwing money at this. The issue is separation, that I wasn't even trained to separate a two-year-old from their mother. I wasn't trained to be a medical care worker. I wasn't trained to be a social worker, is what agent, one agent told me. And the other agent said, do you understand, like you, you, everybody's blaming us, but this is what was handed to us, is the separation policy. Ms. Fry, do you believe the cruelty is intentional? Ms. Long, do you agree that all the problems will be solved if we tell asylum seekers not to come? <laughs> there, when, when, you know, as a poet has, has said, you know, no one puts their child in a boat if the water is not, you know, if the, if the water is not safe for them to land. Um, and that is indeed what people, when you talk to them, the people who are, who are going through this cruel system, they are saying, I had to leave. There was no option for me. And one, can I just say one thing, Representative? You know, um, there has been uh, concern raised about uh, about trafficking of children in yes. this hearing. And that is why uh, I, I, I feel skeptical that that concern is uh, real unless uh, policymakers are ready to invest in having decisions made oh, and assessments made Absolutely. by people who are actually qualified to make those assessments. I know, Ms. Long, we're here. They have every power to introduce legislation to actually tackle some human trafficking issues that we all know do exist, exist and we all want to be able to address it. But I want to pull up a slide of, of, of one of the children's drawings um, that, has been in, uh, that has been in one of the cages, detention centers, camps, whatever you refer to. Ms. Long, as a mother, if my child drew this, I'd be horrified. Is this normal behavior? Should we be worried when we see a children, we see children drawing pictures like this? The American Academy of Pediatricians has warned against the long-term consequences of child detention, even child detention that occurs over short periods of time. Um, this image is an image that shows, I think, what that looks like, what that feels like to a child. It's incredibly traumatizing, and it could have lifelong impacts. Um, the increase in immigration detention reflects only one thing, that this administration's use for prolonged incarceration of asylum seekers and massive operations rounding up of long-term community members who pose no safety risk. Relying on incarceration is the primary focus of immigration law currently, and it's a policy choice by this administration. I want you to know it has always been this way in the 80s, I wanna tell you, in the 80s when numbers on the border were even higher than they are today. The use of detention for immigration purposes was very unusual. 
In the 1990s, detention averages hover, hovered like around 5,000, less than one-tenth of where we are today. There is a better way, and some of my colleagues talked about this. Instead, we could look at guidance on international agencies, evidence-based approaches showing that community-supported programs that allow asylum seekers to live in the community while their cases are processed is actually cheaper and more effective. And more importantly, it will put an end to the suffering of children. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield the rest of my time.